Vá pra Nilma. My name is Mauricio Sodor. I am a journalist by profession. Uh, I've been in this industry for 14 years now. Of course, deep in my mind, I know I knew that we were going to the danger zone, and anything could happen. So immediately we were taken inside uh, the APC and the convoy of uh, more than uh, 60 vehicles started from Liboy and then when we crossed to Somalia we were told that uh, now from here this is the border, this is the border of Kenya and Somalia, we are inside the territory of uh, the enemy. Here yeah, I'm holding 20 rounds in this magazine. Yeah, I'm holding 40, this one 40, all together, this 100 rounds, together this one, this belt has 150 rounds. Enough to fight? Enough to fight. As per me, enough to fight, because only one round, one Al-Shabaab. The enemy, the Al-Shabaab, they are all over here. Any time you can be, be, be shot. First of all, you are anxious to know how the, that curiosity, how, how is it to cover war? There was no road. The vehicles were just moving through the bush, through the thicket. And surprisingly, it took us uh, uh, more than uh, 12 hours to get to, to Tabda. So when we got to Tabda, it was 6 p.m. We were received by the commanding officer in the central uh, sector, Major, at that time was Lieutenant Colonel uh, uh, Jeff Nyaga. The issue is not rushing the operation, but uh, ensuring that the areas that have been liberated, uh, no mercy is restored, pacification uh, operation is undertaken uh, to ensure that uh, uh, things like uh, relief, uh, the NGOs and other agencies can come down here and uh, assist people. Immediately after we had um, taken our meal, a call came in from the spokesman of the, of the enemy, the Al-Shabaab uh, spokesman called. And uh, actually the, 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 the commanding officer told us uh, Please come and listen what they will say. And that guy said that I have seen that you have brought the crew just to put to make propaganda for you, but we will be there to give you the the true the true story. So at that time is now when the reality uh, got into my mind that actually we are dealing with an enemy that have the guts to call the commander of the Kenya Defence Forces who is. Um, leading the operation uh, in the central sector. So true to their words, in the middle of the night, around 11, they came into the camp. They started firing. They started with an RPG. The rocket propelled grenade from all directions, coming outside the defensive positions. They were firing coming inside the camp. Kundi lingine la zaidi ya wanamgambo miambili lilitekeleza mashambulizi katika kambi ya KDF katika mji wa Beles, Kokani. So at that time we were actually inside the bunker. We had been separated. I was in um, one of the bunker. My colleague Franklin Masharia was in the other, uh, the other bunker. The technical crew uh, Ndegwa and Kimeli Arab Kemei were in the different bunker. So 
At that time is when now we realize that actually we are dealing with an enemy who does, who does not fear anything. And it ended uh, 2 a.m. And I remember at the bunker where I was, there was a uh, uh, the, the, there was gun, the, the, the military officers who were specifically uh, in charge of the artillery fire. They were like five meters away from me. So I could be able to capture them firing, firing the, the, the artillery and the firepower to counter the enemy. When we were exchanging ideas with my colleagues, um, some, was, some say they did not sleep, I mean some were fearing for their life, uh, one of my colleagues Afande was sweating, then uh, they told us not to panic, that's how the enemy operates, but uh, at 10 the spokesman called again, they used to call through the Somali National Army, so they, they called again and uh, they were saying that uh, that attack during the night was just a testing, was just a testing. That attack during the night was just testing and they would launch more and more attack. Ni makabiliano makali huku wanajeshi wa Kenya wakipambana na wanamgambo wa kundi la Al Shabab ambao walikuwa wamejaribu kuvamia kambi ya KDF katika eneo la Tabda nchini Somalia. We were in Somalia for 30 days and every day every day nearly every day we were attacked. Ili tubidi tuingie kwenye maandaki kukwepa kupatikana na risasi kutoka kwa wanamgambo hao. Saa moja tu baada ya tabda kushambuliwa. Kundi lingine la zaidi ya wanamgambo miambili lilitekeleza mashambulizi katika kambi ya KDF katika mji wa Beles Kokani. During the night it was a must. During the day we would have a five minute, uh, five minute uh, probing attack. It's called probing attack. They just come firing for five minutes then they disappear. You know, the Al Shabaab, they are not making that frontal war. They always beat us on as in the ambush. They make ambushes on us. That's why you see, uh, time like this, we have to, to be alert, always to be alert. Probing attack always used to happen between 2 p.m. up to 6 p.m. They will come, they will just send small boys just to go and test the firepower. They'll, they'll send uh, maybe five or three guys just to go and, go and test this camp. So when they come, they get killed. They fire, but they get killed. But the major attack, they used to happen at night. Okay, before that attack, uh, the previous night I had a dream. And uh, this dream is, uh, I dreamt that uh, these enemies, they had captured us and they had put us into the OB crew. And they told us, now you can call your commander if you, if you can, right now, because we are now in charge and we have you in custody. So. In the morning when I shared that dream with my colleague, one of my colleagues called uh, uh, Kimeli, he said, no, 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 he's not going with us. Because I remember that morning we were supposed to go to Beles Kokani. There was a convoy of the military that was supposed to go to Beles Kokani to supply more ammunition to our military officers who were in the camp in Beles Kokani. 
that was 46 kilometers away. But now, one of my colleagues, after hearing that dream, he refused to go. So we were left with, uh, I was left with Franklin Masharia to decide whether do we go or we stay. We, we stay. But because we were told by the commanding officer that um, the, 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 the convoy was supposed to go and come back, we can just go and come back. But we had these uh, warnings that the enemy had, uh, were planning attacks uh, along the way. So first of all, uh, we went inside the first uh, APC, and then something told me, no, no, no. When you're coming from Kenya, we were inside the, 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 the APC that was uh, the first APC. So we changed mind, we went for the, the fourth one in that convoy, so we were inside the fourth vehicle. Then we just say, okay, let us just go. Along the way, there were just some butterflies and something just kept on telling me, uh, things are not right, things are not right, things are not right. So we went and found a very big uh, hall that was uh, a result of the IED which exploded uh, some weeks before. So we were shown that, but I mean, we, we continue with our journey. We go to a point where the first vehicle, there was a convoy commander, was a small boy, a 24-year-old uh, year uh, boy. Then he stopped. So all of us, we had stopped. So I saw him jumping out of that APC with his gun. And uh, he went down. He went down just to survey the area. And then he went back. But uh, the mood was like the, we were actually inside the, the, the enemy trap. And that was the feeling. And actually, true to our conscience, when uh, the convoy commander uh, called the radio and said, it's clear we can move, that vehicle only moved for about 10 meters. And then, sure, we just saw the explosion. It was hit by the IED, the vehicle went up, big smoke, and then it came down. So at that moment, we, we had uh, uh, bullets from every direction. Our vehicle were being, it was being fired by uh, rocket-propelled grenades, uh, bullets from the PKM, AK-47, and every, every type of weapon they had. So, it was uh, intense and very heavy. Heavy in the hali ilivokuwa. Initially, I had forgotten that I'm a journalist. So after 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 we had had uh, f bullets uh, firing on our car, I realized I had a camera here. So then I started. Uh, recording so I, I i wanted just to record something that i could capture at that moment so we could hear the bullets of the as they were hitting the vehicle and then uh, after that an rpg came and hit at the side where my my colleague uh, my colleague was that side it hit that side then the vehicle moved and then it went back so the driver was trying to to move because you need to drive that vehicle so that the enemy cannot fire the RPG at the same spot of that glass. Instantly assessing the positions of the Al Shabaab attackers and firing back. The army men ordering our journalist Franklin Masharia to lie low as they fired back. All this time, our cameraman Mauritius Odwar having the presence of mind to capture the action on camera. At that point, he was sweating because everyone, we knew that actually we, we were dying. So, it was really intense. He was really afraid. I could see fear. Uh, on his face. 
So that's the time I realized just to record, to record him, he was really sweating and uh, he was not even speaking anything. We started talking about that thing after we had gone back to the camp. Because there's nothing you could speak because you have all of us we had seen. We had seen what had happened. We had seen uh, everything that has transpired. We have, uh, we, we lost one uh, soldier. There, there was a friend of ours called Ngetich. Unfortunately, they had fired uh, an 84 millimeter anti-tank. So it penetrated the, the, the panad vehicle and it hit him at the pelvic. So we lost him. It was very, it was very unfortunate because we had just taken breakfast with him. All of us, we were very angry. But um, 20 minutes after that, we saw the, the air power. Now we saw the, 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 the helicopters, the, helico the, the, the YY helicopters came and started uh, firing the enemy from above. So uh, at that time, at least we, 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 we managed to neutralize the enemy. Uh, nearly all of them were killed. So the helicopters went back to the camp. So there was reinforcement that was coming from um, Tabda. We decided not to proceed with our journey, but we went back with this uh, reinforcement that had come. So we went back because I told Franklin Mashare, now that at least we have a story here, and we have something, let us just go back and file the story. So we went back to the camp and uh, informed our colleague Kimeli, who was there, and uh, he was very sorry for us, but everyone, everyone was sad that day because we had lost one, one, one soldier. In the battlefield is much, much worse and much have you, you can imagine, you are fighting with an enemy that's not going away. He's there, you're fighting from 9 p.m., 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, up to 3 a.m. Fighting for five, six, more than six hours, non-stop. You see, much of the revenue collected by the Al-Shabaab Al uh, uh, was from the businesses in Kismayo be it charcoal businesses, be it uh, local, uh, uh, local businesses, be it fishing. So they were taking, they were having that uh, revenue collected and considering that the Kismayo is the, the biggest city in the um, southern, the Jubalanda. So they were getting that much, much revenue from that, uh, from that city. And you see, the funds they get is what uh, funded the operations and the terror networks. So it was very, very significant for the KDF to capture that town. I remember during that uh, night, uh, the Al Shabaab had put, uh, they, they had blocked, they had put their defending positions on the, on the, on the roads that were getting into the Kismayo. But uh, the KDF landed through the ocean at night, so they were caught off guard. So by the time they realized that the KDF were coming from the ocean, they could not even fight them. The fire, they, 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 fire, they, they started firing, but they were overpowered. So that's what, how they were removed from Kismayo Port. I have been in Somalia. I have seen the war. I have seen the operation, I have seen the kind of work that uh, uh, the soldiers have done. I can see the, the kind of work that is yet to be done. Because that country, if we, can, if we don't do anything right now, I'm telling you, it will still go back to the same situation. <laughs> Papa Newman.